This story comes from a series of books entitled Short and Shivery, a collection of old haunting folk tales gathered into a collection of books by Robert D. Sans Souci. If any of you are familiar with the books Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, then these books are very similar to those. Much like Alvin Schwartz, Susie gathers tales of old from different countries around the world and resurrects the horror embedded within them through print. I will be reading this story, and hopefully many others, straight from the pages. If any of you guys would like your very own physical copy of this book in particular, it can be purchased through Amazon, which you can find in the link below. Now, gather around for a shiver. This story originated from Washington Irving and his published work entitled Tales of a Traveler in 1825. It would later grow into a regional folk tale throughout New England and ended up being featured in Myths and Legends of Our Own Land by Charles M. Skinner. This story is called The Devil and Tom Walker. A few miles from Boston, the sea has cut a deep inlet that winds several miles inland and ends in a thickly wooded swamp. On one side of the water is a dark grove of trees. On the opposite side, the land rises abruptly from the shore into a high ridge on which grow scattered oaks of immense age and size. Under one such tree, according to old stories, Captain Kidd, the pirate, buried a great treasure. The stories add that the devil oversaw the hiding of the money and took it under his guardianship, as he always does with buried treasure that has been ill-gotten. Kidd never returned to claim his gold, being captured soon after at Boston, sent to England and there hanged for piracy. Later in the year 1727, a miserly fellow named Tom Walker dwelled near this place. He lived in a forlorn house surrounded by a few straggling trees. One day, Tom took a shortcut homeward through the swamp. Like most shortcuts, it was an ill-chosen route. It was dusk when Tom reached the ruins of an old fort in the middle of the swamp. He paused to rest on the trunk of a fallen hemlock. Absently, he turned up the soil with his walking staff. Suddenly, his staff struck something hard, and he uncovered an ancient skull with a tomahawk buried deep in it. Humph, said Tom Walker as he gave it a kick. Let that skull alone said a gruff voice. Tom looked up and saw a tall man dressed in black seated opposite him on the stump of a tree. He scowled at Tom with a pair of large red eyes. What are you doing on my ground? And pray who are you, if I may be so bold, said Tom. Oh, I go by various names. In this neighborhood, I am known by the name of the Black Woodsman. If I mistake not, said Tom sturdily, you are also commonly called Old Scratch. At your service, replied the devil with a nod. And so the two began a conversation as Tom returned homeward. The dark man told him of huge sums of gold and silver buried by Kid the pirate under the oak trees on the high ridge. This treasure was protected by his power so that only someone who gained his favor could find it. This he offered to Tom, on certain conditions. The conditions must have been very hard because Tom asked for time to think about them, and he was not a man to worry about trifles when money was in view. When they reached the edge of the swamp, Tom said, What proof have I that all you have been telling me is true? Here is my signature, said Old Scratch, pressing his finger against Tom's forehead. Then he turned off into the swamp and seemed to go down, down, down into the earth until he totally disappeared. When Tom reached home, he found a black fingerprint, which nothing could erase, on his forehead. This made him think even more carefully about the terms he had been offered. Soon enough, however, greed won over caution. One evening, Tom set out for the abandoned fort. Soon he met the black woodsman with his axe on his shoulder strolling through the swamp, humming a tune. By degrees, Tom brought up the subject of business, and they began to haggle about the terms on which Tom was to have the pirate's treasure. You shall become a money lender, 
the devil proposed. You shall open a shop in Boston. You shall lend money to the desperate at ruinous rates, extort bonds, foreclose mortgages, and drive the merchants to bankruptcy. I'll drive them to the devil, cried Tom. Exactly, said the man in black with a grim smile. Then he extended his hand, saying, Done. Done, said Tom Walker. So they shook hands and struck a bargain. Soon Tom Walker was seated behind his new desk and accounting house in Boston. The place was richly furnished and had been paid for in antique gold coins to which traces of dark earth still clung. His business was thronged by the needy who hoped to keep a roof over their heads and bread on the table. The foolhardy who dreamed of turning borrowed money into great fortunes, gamblers whose luck had run out, and merchants whose credit had dried up. In short, everyone driven to raise money by desperate means and desperate sacrifices hurried to Tom Walker. Tom acted like a friend, but he always demanded full return and for the money he loaned. He squeezed his customers as dry as a sponge and sent them away destitute. In this way, he became a rich and mighty man and built himself a vast house. As Tom grew old, however, he grew thoughtful. Having secured the good things of this world, he began to worry about the next. He regretted his deal with the devil and tried to think of how to escape from his bargain with the black woodsman. All of a sudden, he became a violent churchgoer. He prayed loudly as if he could take possession of heaven by the force of lungs. He constantly censured his neighbors and seemed to think that every sin he noted in them was a credit to him. Soon his zeal became as notorious as his riches. In spite of all this, Tom dreaded that the devil would have his due after all and carry him off. So Tom always kept a small Bible in his coat pocket. He also had a huge Bible on his counting house desk and was frequently found reading the Bible when people called on business. Then he would lay his spectacles in the book to mark the place while he drove some ruinous bargain. One hot summer afternoon, as a black thunderstorm was coming up, Tom sat in his counting house in his white cap and silk robe. He was about to foreclose a mortgage which would ruin an unlucky man. My family will be driven to the poorhouse, the wretched man pleaded. I must take care of myself, replied Tom. But you have made so much money out of me already, the other cried. Tom lost his patience in his piety. The devil take me, said he, if I have made a farthing. Just then, there were three loud knocks on the door. Tom opened it to see who was there. A man dressed in a black woodsman outfit was holding a black horse, which neighed and stamped with impatience. Tom, you're come for, said the fellow gruffly. Tom shrank back, but too late. He had left his little Bible in his coat pocket and his big Bible on the desk, under the mortgage he was about to foreclose. Never was a sinner taken more unawares. The black figure whisked him into the saddle, and the horse galloped away down the streets. Tom Walker's white cap bobbed up and down, his robe fluttered in the wind, and the steed struck fire out of the cobblestones at every bound. The dark woodsman disappeared in a blaze of black fire. Tom never returned to foreclose the mortgage. A man who lived on the border of the swamp reported that at the height of the thunderstorm he had heard a great clattering of hooves and a howling along the road. He ran to the window and caught sight of a figure on a horse that raced like mad across the fields and down into the black swamp towards the old fort. Shortly thereafter, a lightning bolt fell and seemed to set the whole forest ablaze. When neighbors searched Tom's office, they found all his bonds and mortgages burned to cinders. His huge iron chest was filled with chips and shavings of wood instead of gold and silver. The next day, his house caught fire and burned to the ground. Such was the end of Tom Walker and his ill-gotten wealth. Thank you all so much for listening to tonight's story. If you'd like to hear more, feel free to subscribe. If there's a horror story that you'd like me to narrate, feel free to email me at catacomblibrary at gmail.com. 
You can also follow me on social media using the links below, and if you'd like to donate to my Patreon, you can do that as well. I have exclusive content for those who do, and you will be financially supporting this channel, which I'll be very thankful for. For now, your visit to the catacombs has ended. Stay safe out there.